Good morning. So today's topic is posterior urethral valve. Before starting the posterior urethral valve, I would like any one of you to just uh, add anything if you know uh, the definition of posterior urethral valve. As said, posterior urethral valve. Basically, uh, posterior urethral valve is a membranous structure in the posterior urethra. Uh, that uh, remains uh, uh, in the posterior urethra during development and obstruct the outflow of the urine uh, after the child is born. So uh, it is uh, it persists basically in male male childs. So that causes outflow obstruction and, uh, and the future security of that. So, uh, developmental delay, a developmental disorder, that is it, right? Yeah. So, it's only a problem in the postnatal period or also in the antenatal period? It can be in the antenatal period as well. It uh, can be diagnosed in the antenatal ultrasound, hydronocortic kidneys. Okay. So, that could be a problem in antenatal as well as the pronatal yeah. period. Okay. So, we'll start with this. Adil, start with the presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we will discuss posterior urethral valve. Uh, I am Dr. Adil Yousafzai and my moderator is Dr. Mevish. Uh, it's a huge uh, pathology. Uh, it involves both urology and nephrology. And it's involved uh, lower, uh, lower urinary tract and upper urinary tract. The learning objectives is as flashed. Uh, posterior urethral valve congenital obstructing membranous folds within the lumen of posterior urethra causing lower urinary tract obstruction. Uh, there is a famous quote of uh, Sir David William. Uh, he was a, a British pediatric uh, urologist. Uh, the primary lesion is simple to treat, but total care of boy with posterior urethral valve is complicated undertaking. Uh, anatomy of posterior urethral valve, uh, the prostatic urethra is markedly dilated, the vesicle neck raised, bladder orifice relaxed, Deep pitting penetrates down into either lateral wall of the prostatic urethra. The verumentinum is seen a fine frenulum which extends distally for about one centimeter and a definite valve on either side of the urethra rising from the floor of uh, each side wall. Embryology. Uh, there are different embryological uh, bases uh, have been proposed. Uh, one is hypertrophy of urethral mucosal fold the cloacal remnants, the abnormal development of Wolfian and Mullerian duct, and the abnormal insertion or absorption of Wolfian duct into cloaca. Uh, epidemiology uh, it is the most common congenital anomalies of the urinary tract affect up to one in uh, 500 pregnancies, most common obstructive uropathy, and it is the most common cause of bladder absorption and infants. Uh, the lower urinary tract obstruction has an incidence of 2.2 per 10,000 births, of which posterior urethral valve was the most common pathology. Young class, uh, Young's classification. Uh, in 1919, Young uh, described the first endoscopic uh, obstruction of the urethra uh, and coined the uh, terminology of posterior urethral valve. Uh, there are three types. Uh, type 1, uh, in which the leaflets arises from the verumentinum take an interior force and then fuse in the midline, just proximal to the external striated urethral sphincter. Uh, the type 2 is obsolete now, uh, and the type 3, there is a complete uh, angular ring attached to the entire circumference of the urethra, and there will be a small opening in the center. Pathophysiology, uh, children with posterior urethral valve develop thickened bladders uh, because of increased collagen deposition and muscle hypertrophy within the bladder wall. Uh, hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the detrusor muscles and increase in connective tissue decreases bladder compliance during feeding. Uh, the bladder emptying occurs with high intravesical pressures, uh, which can be transmitted to the ureters and kidneys. These patients are therefore susceptible to incontinence, infection, and progressive uh, renal damages. Uh, Posterior valve uh, can damage uh, lung, kidneys, bladder, and uh, ureter. Uh, in lungs, it causes uh, pulmonary hypoplasia uh, due to decrease uh, uh, urine or uh, oligohydromerios. Uh, in kidney, it causes reversible renal insufficiency, irreversible renal insufficiency, and electrolyte imbalance. Uh, in bladder, uh, there is uh, poor sensation, hyperconductivity and low compliance, 
uh, and ureter, uh, poor conductivity and inability to cope and transport urine. Antiretinal diagnosis. The posterior valve is detected in approximately 1 in 12 50 ultrasound screenings, accounting for 10% of significant antenatally detected genitally urinary disease, <coughs> afflicting one third of surviving infants with bilateral renal diseases. The pathognomic ultrasound findings are thickened dilated bladder, bilateral hydroureter and pelvic lactasis, oligohydronios, and dilated posterior urethra displaying the keyhole sign. The fetal MRI imaging is an adjuvant and prenatal diagnosis and increase, uh, increasingly available at major centers. Uh, it is to uh, distinguish the degree of obstruction based on urethral dilation, bladder distension with thickened bladder wall, and reduced amniotic fluids level. Uh, lung hypoplasia and cystic changes in renal parenchyma are also apparent on MRI. Uh, Valvular obstructions develop at uh, seventh week of gestation. Uh, these abnormalities are usually seen between 16 to 20 weeks when the enamel scan is done. Uh, with such findings, the obstructions refers to you. Uh, so you have to counsel and reassurance the uh, parents. Uh, they should be registered uh, uh, to the proper obstruction care and uh, neonatal ICU care. Uh, in severe cases, uh, if they picked up early, uh, so the treatment is termination of pregnancy. Uh, intervention is performed when antiretinal ultrasound detects oligohydronios, uh, dilated bladder, and severe hydroureteronephrosis without renal cortical cyst. Uh, the favorable prognosis uh, depend on uh, amniotic uh, electrolytes in which su uh, urinary sodium less than 100 milliequivalent per liter, chloride less than 90 milliequivalent per liter, Ascularity less than 200 milliequivalent per liter and beta 2 microglobulin uh, less than 6 milligram per liter. Uh, Antiretinal management uh, we can do with zyco amniotic shunting, anti uterine valve ablations. Uh, these two are uh, done in the developed world uh, and termination of pregnancy and preterm birth. Zyco amniotic shunting. Uh, in vizacomniotic shunting, uh, you can just put a DJ, uh, double J stent, uh, one in, in the fetal bladder and the uh, other in an amniotic cavity uh, to drain the uh, urine from uh, fetal uh, bladder to the amniotic cavity. Uh, Intrauterine wealth ablation uh, in which a fetal cystoscope uh, has been done and a 1 to 2 mm of uh, endoscope passed through uh, maternal abdomen, through uterus, and uh, the uh, uh, fetal bladder uh, uh, to see the direct vision of uh, bladder neck and to uh, reject the valve. Postnatal presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, the postnatal presentation range between uh, day 1 and 14 years with the mean of 3.9 years. Uh, more than half of patients when age within one year of age. Uh, they can present with poor strains, dribbling, incontinence, uh, abdominal swelling, fever, failure to thrive, and palpable bladder. Okay, so first the antenatal diagnosis. Antenatally, this valve is a problem in a fetus, and that really that caused the symptoms. So why is there a problem in antenatal period because of the presence of this valve? Anyone? Sayad? Why do we have problems because of the presence of this valve in the antenatal period? Uh, basically, uh, when the uh, child engulfs the amniotic fluid and uh, uh, he will urinate uh, inside the amniotic cavity. So, uh, when there is a posterior ureter valve, the amniotic fluid uh, reduces in the quantity that leads towards the oligohydromnios. So, uh, then uh, this will result into the uh, uh, re reduced development of uh, lungs and uh, uh, decreased uh, quantity, uh, decreased, uh, you know, uh, amount of fluid leads towards the reduced uh, development of uh, brain. Okay. Anyone else? Hamad? Also, the, uh, uh, the amniotic fluid is basically the fetal urine uh, that is produced. So, uh, the outlet obstruction leads to uh, persistent uh, uh, raised intravesical pressure, which can uh, damage upper urinary tract, uh, causing uh, permanent renal scarring. Mm. 
kidney development and yes. scarring is present okay anyone else anyone else amar <laughs> dysplastic kidneys uh, due to deposition of cartilage okay within the parenchyma okay. kidney parenchyma so we basically have multiple organs that have been affected as already been pointed out we have the pulmonary system affected and multiple system affected but most importantly the renal functions are basically affected because of the excessive amount of pressure that has been generated and the kidneys basically has two form of the abnormalities that can develop as said that could be a dysplastic kidney that would be basically a malformed kidney that would be formed or excessive amount of pressure in the bladder that would be because of inadequate emptying that would actually lead to the excessive amount of the uh, pressure in the kidneys and that would lead to the renal failure in the fetus uh, definitely if a patient fetus from the time of development will have a renal failure he would have a poor prognosis in antenatal as well as the postnatal period and it would be very difficult for the fetus to survive so these intervention which have been given although very ra uh, rarely seen in pakistan but these are very necessary in cases of the severe form of the Uh, hydronephrosis in the fetus that is developing definitely is a developing period if we don't do an intervention the kidneys won't be mal uh, won't be formed and in this early period it could be very difficult to treat the babies in the early neonatal period so these interventions are very necessary and it's very necessary to pick this condition earlier on so that it could be intermediate and any form of the pressure that could be reduced okay so okay start adil yeah uh, the postnatal diagnosis uh Uh, ultrasonography much like the antenatal period uh, classic findings on ultrasound uh, suggest a posterior valve are a uh, distended bladder with thickened bladder wall presence of bladder diverticula dilated posterior urethra and high bladder neck with hyperplasia and the classic keyhole sign is often evident as well uh, these are the ultrasound uh, in the right one it shows the uh, distended bladder with thick walled and distal bil uh, bilateral distal hydroureter and it can show the keyhole sign <clears throat> uh, widening cyst urethrography uh, the bladder often appears thickened and trabeculated with multiple diverticuli mimicking the appearance of a neuropathic bladder high grade vesicular ureter reflex may be seen in approximately 50% of patient with valves at the time of diagnosis images obtained during the widening phase will show contrast traveling across a hypertrophied elevated bladder neck and grossly dilated posterior urethra <coughs> a widening neurosonography uh, the second generation ultrasound contrast has enabled ultrasound guided dynamic imaging of the lower urinary tract Uh, well established in the diagnosis of reflux with the contrast enhanced uh, widening ultrasonography with some studies reporting sensitivity exceeding the present standard of care of fluoroscopic widening cystrotrogram <laughs> radio isotope scans uh, it can offers quantification of differential renal function and cortical deficits uh, met3 is a useful agent to evaluate renal functional contribution uh, the placement of urinary catheter is essential in a patient with vesicular ureteral reflux to minimize error in the calculation of renal function <coughs> uh lab evaluation uh, the biochemical evaluation centers on electrolytes and creatinine values neither creatinine value is an effective prognostic indicator for long term kidney function uh postnatal management uh, a 5 or 7 fr feeding tube or similar caliber urinary catheter should be inserted per urethra in an infant representing to the neonatal intensive care unit with the presumed diagnosis of lower urinary tract obstruction uh, catheter placement into the bladder may be impeded by the hypertrophy and often elevated bladder neck and curling of the catheter within the dilated posterior urethra in such cases a cordy tip uh, catheter or alternatively using a stylet to curl the tip of the feeding tube dorsally uh, will facilitate uh, the bladder drainage well ablation a uh, cystoscopy with a, uh, with ablations of posterior valve is considered the preferred initial surgical option the treatment goal is to restore flow of urine through the urethra 
and enable normal cycling, filling, and emptying of the bladder, which is superior to urinary diversion and passive urine drainage. Availability of 7.5 French or 9 French infant cystoscope can be used to incise the wells at the ventral 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock positions with or without an incision on the dorsal 12 o'clock position. Alternatively, at 12 o'clock alone might be uh, sufficient. Wells are thin and associated with minimal vascularity and aggressive resection should be avoided. Uh, these are the images of uh, well ablations. <coughs> Vizocostomy. Vizocostomy is reserved primarily for the very low birth weight infant uh, and for a child with continued impaired renal function, high bladder urine volumes, and upper trach deterioration after well ablation or urethral catheterization. Uh, the key operative step and uh, creation of the vizicostomy is to ensure that the posterior wall of the bladder is taut, accomplished by bringing the dome of the bladder to the skin to prevent prolapse of the back, of, uh, back wall of the bladder through the incision. Uh, these are the steps. Uh, of the blocks on technique and incision is made uh, uh, at a point midway between the umbilicus and the pubis that corresponds to the upper limit of the filled bladder. Uh, a transfer incision is made in the rectus fascia uh, and the bladder detrusor muscle is exposed. Uh, stay sutures or non crusting uh, clamps are used to mobilize the bladder while dissecting the peritoneum. The dome of the bladder is identified by uh, ligating the uracal remnant. A transverse incision is then made in the dome of the bladder. The bladder detrusor is sutured to the rectus fascia, placing these sutures one centimeter away from the edge of the bladder. Uh, the bladder opening is sutured to the skin. <coughs> Upper trach diversions. Uh, when renal dilation and biochemical markers of renal function fails to improve despite maximal bladder drainage, uh, they are to protect the upper urinary trach from a uh, urethrovesical junction obstruction caused by a tortuous intramural ureter uh, passing through a thick and valve affected bladder. Uh, we can do distal ureterostomy, uh, proximal loop ureterostomy, cutaneous pylostomy. Uh, ring urethrostomy and sober wide urethrostomy. <coughs> Circumcision, a urinary trach infection can quickly progress to polynephritis and sepsis and infants with posterior urethral valves. The overall risk of urinary trach infection in children with posterior urethral valves is 50% to 60%. Uh, circumcision reduces this uh, risk for urinary trach infection by 83 to 92%. A risk reduction similar to that for uncircumcised boys. Uh, so the summary is uh, the preferred initial surgical intervention for infant with posterior third valve should be considered endoscopic valve ablation followed by visicostomy. Uh, in the unique case in which upper trach dilation persists after visicostomy and is accompanied by worsening renal parameters, upper urinary trach diversion with a cutaneous urethrostomy or renal pilostomy is considered after multi-speciality consultation with pediatric nephrologist and radiologist. Okay, Adil, one minute. Okay, okay for the postnatal period, <clears throat> any one of you can let me know the presentation, the symptoms the patient might present with you. Uh, for example, a patient of three days or four days, how would that patient present? A uh, patient might present with history of delayed voiding uh, uh, at the time of birth and uh, also with obstructive lower urinary tract symptoms like uh, straining and uh, excessive crying. Uh, <clears throat> also on examination, uh, a palpable bladder can be found. This okay, a three or four day, or four day old male that might be presenting with inability to void or something which might be a catheter might be inserted that might have difficulty or upper tract that might have been uh, have an ultrasound that might be dilated. That would be the presentation symptom in a three or four day old. And if the patient is a bit older, because all the boys won't be presenting in a that <laughs> or in all the vaginal. <laughs> so if the patient presents to you maybe a six months old boy, how would that patient present to you? Um. He, he will also present with the history of avoiding symptoms like straining and poor stream, 
and uh, dribbling or or maybe has history of incontinence as well uh, or uh, if uh, uh, if 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 we uh, investigate him on ultrasound he may have a <clears throat> thick gall bladder and uh, bilateral hydro urethronephrosis uh, and uh, 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 significant post white residue uh also if a uh, patient has uh, a component of vesicouretic reflux he can present with history of recurrent febrile illnesses mm. okay mariam uh, for a newborn children other than the palpable abdominal mass because of the massive hydronephrosis and uh, low urinary tract symptoms there will be a sign of sepsis as well electrolyte imbalances other than uh, along with the renal failure that the patient might have because of the massively dilated upper tract and in case of older children the patient will present to you with the poor urinary stream uh, incomplete bladder emptying uh, the persistent recurrent utis and as dr hamath has said that uh, there will be a associated vur as well yes and the patient would have recurrent utis that's important so the patient presents to you with this and you start evaluating with um, basic basic ultrasound and basic lab values that might indicate renal failure in that patient and ultrasound be done a very important investigation if a child could be done that could be post void bladder as well as the bladder thickness that could be indicating that there is something abnormal then the voiding cysto urethrogram the contrast study that would be pointing out that uh, the posterior urethra is dilated with might be vur vur basically are present in about 50% of these patient or more patients <clears throat> that might be present in that so you evaluated the patient and now you are basically planning for any form of surgical intervention mostly these patients uh, if they presenting late they might not need a surgical intervention so we need a follow up for these patients okay so if we are planning for a surgical intervention <clears throat> if a 2 or 3 day old boy which might have been catheterized outside present to you so what surgical intervention we might be considering for that in a 2 3 day old boy who might be prenatal who might have low birth weight or anything like that actually we will go for a catheter drainage if the catheter has been passed but the upper tract is still dilated and the patient is in failure so then we can go for the upper tract uh, diversion or drainage so we consider the upper tract diversion either in the form of vesicostomy or in the form of urethrostomies as well but if the catheter if the uh, creatinine is not improving with the uh, catheter drainage so we don't go for the vesicostomy we usually we go for the urethrostomy or the pcn drainage yes yes so we have to uh, just, uh, we have to basically intervene for the upper tract as well okay okay other continue uh all of is focused on observation clinical history and urodynamics uh, education of parents and growing children to not aggressively push an affected child toward toilet training and to expect a leg compared with the normal population uh, daytime incontinence is common uh, nocturnal enuresis is expected once toilet trained uh, is achieved children and caregivers are educated to ensure adequate fluid intake void on a time regime and practice double voiding and biofeedback therapy and home pelvic floor exercises uh, thank you